Okay, I'm passing the presenter role over to you, Jono. Jono, are you there? Because we're not, so not like, here. I don't hear Jono either. Okay, I thought it was me. <laughs> nope. Okay, let me let him know. Yeah, sorry, I had myself muted. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, okay. No worries. Apologize. Um, so, yeah, uh, nice to meet you. Thanks for uh, continuing, you know, your your interest in Hubbly. Um, yeah. And so, if you guys could just bring me up to speed a little bit, you, you've already you've already had a demo, right? Um, I did. I had a demo um, with Andre, and um, I just had some follow-up questions as to, you know, through the demo, it kind of shows you what the groups are and yeah. um, all of those things. But I didn't really understand or get a good picture of, like, as a user in a classroom, like, we're planning on giving our teachers iPads, and we want them to use this to be able to take attendance. Um, mm -hmm. You know, be able to look up a student if they have an allergy, like how are those students flagged? I just want to right. see what that looks like. Sure. Um, okay. Well, yeah, there's there's like a thousand different implementations of the features. So um, it's what we'll do okay. is try to use examples that, you know, show you um, how the system works and then, you know, um, and then... Um, Hopefully, like it'll be clear, you know, Perfect. the the different other ways that you could use the same features. Um, you know, just bear with me. I'm just going to pause this for one second. Sure. Just going to log in and just to make sure I'm in the right account. So, what's your role? So, I'm the office manager. Um, we have uh, a person that does um, all of QuickBooks, takes care of all the financials, and then the director of the school. Um, we have about 106 students right now. So, you know, we're, we're a smaller school. Um, mm. We have four classrooms. But it's, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of work. <laughs> oh, yeah, With no, absolutely. 100 yeah. students. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem to change. Like what we see is that as students, as the enrollment grows, the um, the staff grows. But as the enrollment shrinks, the staff shrinks. So it seems like it's the same. Really, it's the same workload until you get to like a really small school, right? But basically, once you're at 50 to 70 kids, you know, it seems to be the same kind of ratio, and everyone's doing the same amount of work. It just kind of scales up on a like one to one ratio, you know. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so let me get this started again. So I actually logged in as uh, as Pat. I'm just going to go to like, this is like an example, like a demo <clears throat> of what a you know a Hubly site could be like. Um, so you'd have uh, you know different rooms for or different groups for different classes. Right. Um, so let's just say this is you know class 104. Um, okay. So if you're a teacher. You would, uh, you know, you could go into a group, and uh, if you wanted to communicate, um, you know, with this, with the members of this group specifically, you could just click in here and, and type a message, and it'll go out to all the members of that group. Uh, so sure. these are just a bunch of different messages, and you were you were tracking, you know, the delivery, who it got delivered to, who who opened it. Um, right. And those messages go to their email inbox, and they can reply back and forth. Uh, if Got you want to let them, they can also comment, you know, so if you can, you know, if somebody has a question, they can ask a question. And if I'm telling you stuff you already know and I'm being redundant, you can go ahead and tell me. Um, yeah, I think I understand this part of the system, you know, mm -hmm. the communication piece that's going to be going out to each group, um, how that works and all of that. Mm -hmm. So that's all great and I like it. Mm -hmm. What I'm looking for now is to see... Um, how else the teacher is going to use this tool? Yep. Okay. So they're also going to make events, right? Um, they're going to send newsletters uh, as well. Um, so all that stuff is happening um, either specifically to the group or site, you know, site-wide to everybody, 
So, sure. um, so that's, that's where you'd go in here to the groups to, to manage that. <clears throat> and then there's also forms, but a really good example of, you know, what a teacher would do is it, it you know, it's really, it really comes down to the, the forms, the digital forms, okay. uh, because, you know, anything you currently can do on paper, you can do with our digital forms. So that's any type of documentations around a student that a teacher has to do. Um, anything from attendance, uh, you know, to, you know, a full Common Core Alliance scope and sequence report, anything. Our digital forms handles all of that. And okay. parents also use, you know, parents are also filling out information about, you know, the students uh, with these digital forms. And sure. so they, you know, so as, as a real basic example, let's take a look at like an attendance form. I'm just going to click Great. on this to open it up. So let's say I'm a, I'm a teacher. And I'm going to go and um, I want to, you know, track attendance for one of my students. I can also just select all of them at one time. Um, and so our digital forms, you know, to build these forms, it's really easy. It's just a drag and drop form builder. We actually do it all for you at the beginning. So you don't, have, you, you don't even have to, like, go through the, the, the actual effort or the labor to do it. We'll set it all up it, for you. I um, like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a completely done for you setup and service ongoing, just so you know. Um, and uh, but we will teach you how to use the system because it is easy to do. And depending on our users, uh, you know, we've got if I need a thing on the fly, I'll be able to do it. Yeah. And, you know, some people are just like, well, they would rather not, you know, book a session with one of us or like wait, you know, or send it into support or even bother the phone call, they'll just do it themselves because it really takes, it can take like 30 seconds to build a, a field trip form, you know, okay. that can have a signature and, a, and accept a payment. Like literally it can, take, it can be done in 30 seconds. I so, like that. Yeah, but you know, if, if you're gonna build like a whole scope and sequence, that's probably better just to lay that on us because <laughs> it's time consuming, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot, you know? So so we'll set all that up for you according to however, however you need it. Um, Great. Anyway, so this is an example, so I'm gonna, Pick Leo, I say she's present. If I want, I can leave some notes. Da 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 da. And then, um, you know, again, these are features. Generally, all the kind, of, all the notification features can be turned off, on or off. This one is set to, um, you know, send these parents here. These are the parents of the of this child. To that um, they checked in. Yeah, that they, exactly. So if I submit this, I'll just show you a couple of things that happen. So this is going to end up on Leora's page. So her record this is going to go into Leora's records right so i'm going to go over to, to her page so i'm going to go to the students page mm -hmm. so here's leora happens to be my daughter i have to update this picture she's almost two now ah <laughs> cute still love that picture though um so that attendance record that I just submitted is right here. Um, and I okay. can, you know, now also I'll just go into my, my email just so you can see that, you know, that, how the notifications work here. So this is the email that just came in. Um, you know, dear Jono, I had to send you a submission. You know, so any and this that works the same way for any form submission. You know, and then I can reply back to it, or you know, just now that can all be turned on or off per form. So you can say this form needs to send notifications. This form doesn't. It's uh, you know, it's totally customizable. Um, right. They can also come come in here and, and preview each one of those submissions. It's kind of like a, a digital filing cabinet, you know, for for the student or like a binder, so to speak. So okay, I see, I see that. Now, um, doing that individually, you had mentioned before that you could like select all students in the group. Here's uh -huh. my thing: like, if they're trying to take attendance quickly, yeah, um, are we able to? set it up where they can just kind of have a list and then go down and kind of check people off as present or not present? Well, so, th I mean, that, that's like a paper experience, and that makes sense for paper. It doesn't make sense for digital products, really. Um, um, so, so the way we would do it is a little bit um, 
slicker, so to speak. So if we go back to that form, um, so I can just select all and then hit present or absent or whatnot. Okay. Or, and this can be in really can be like more options. Like, what was that? And you can have 20 more options here. I mean, this could be as simple or as, you know, um, as complex as you want it to be, really, if, if you want to have different options or drop downs and things like that. So I understand that part. Um, and I understand, you know, they're going to shift from a piece of paper to something electronic, but is there any way for them then to see you know, in one Who's quick in? Yes. glance. Yeah. Yep. Yes, because so, so what will happen is in and out of the classroom, they'll go out to the park and they take attendance and then they come back in. Or, you know, they take attendance several times during the day to make sure they have all the kids. Right. So right. we need so, something that helps them with that. Right. So, so if we just go to the form, we can just click on view entries. Okay. And this can be organized, you know, any way you want, but you can you can see all the all the records for all the students, whether they're present or absent. Okay. And so it could be like if you're checking them in, you just select all in, right? Um mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll show up here and then you could see this and you can sort it by any way you want. You could even do a search for one of the you know, if I just do a search for Leora, it'll now just filter and just show me Leora's records. Sure. Um, or it could be by a certain class, or I can just if I click this to sort it by date. So now I'm seeing it either either way, like this is recent to, you know, most recent up top. Right, right. <clears throat> and you can see the status okay. where they are. And then, and then from here, if, you know, if they need to even update the entry, they can just click on edit entry. And Okay, I like that because during... Like oh, we have two dis we actually we have three dismissal points during the day. Mm -hmm. So if she's present in the morning, we can then go in and say, you know, edit entry. Now she's dismissed. Might, or we can build. Easier. Yeah, it might be easy to have like three different forms so that it's like you know morning attendance, afternoon, or after school. You know what I mean? Correct. And, and, we and do have. Where, yeah. We have that, but so that's the thing because we have we we currently let me tell you what we currently do because I just want to make sure that yes it it's going to come across a little bit differently than we're used to, but mm -hmm. they still need to have the same functionality or they will revolt. You know, yeah. there's we have to make sure we know where kids are at any point, and we also need to know how many children. We do a count as well. Yeah, so, so um, but first up, right. yeah. so we have like um, a morning classroom. We have some kids that get dismissed at 11.30. Some get dismissed after lunch and stay for lunch. Some children come in for afternoon at 11.30 and come for lunch first. Mm -hmm. And then some just come at 12.30 and then get, you know, they're just there after lunch. So, yeah. you know, I guess we, we then build a – we have – Current paper copies for our AM, for our lunch counts, for our PM, yeah. and then we also have a before care and after care. So, so, so I think the easiest way to do this, there's two different ways you can go about it. You could have a different form for each segment of the day, mm -hmm. or you could just have a drop down in the form that selects the segment, and then you can just sort it by that segment. Right. You know what I mean? So, like. In, in that original attendance form, you could have it dropped in here for like morning, afternoon, and with a time. You could even add a time stamp. You know what I mean? Everything is date and time stamp when it happens. So it's like, you know, um, okay. a lot of schools have it. It, it, it can be, it can be like I said, that's what I meant by it can be more complex, where it's like, you know, one form handles any scenario, or, you know, we have like three different forms, you know? Um, okay. And it's all, they're all located in the same place. You know, in the forms, you know, everybody learns where it is, takes, you know, one time to do it. You know, it's everyone with half a brain can figure this out. It's really easy to do. And, yeah. 
uh, and it's all there. And so, um, and, and, and that's just, and that's a great example of like, uh, so let me ask you something like with all those paper records, right? What happens with them after like the end of the day, the, the end of the month, how do you organize or reconcile all that data? Like what do you, who, who manages that and what? So happens? as far as attendance data, um, we have two different processes. We mm -hmm. have, we have three classrooms that, you know, those lists are maintained. They're a Monday through Friday list where they're doing check marks or whatever and crossing things out and adding things up at the bottom. And at the end of the week, they throw them away. We have one classroom that... What do you mean they throw them away? Like They throw them in the garbage. They're gone. But where do, where do, where do those tallies go? We don't need to keep them. Okay. Interesting. All right. Uh, so our three to six program is through it's it's under the American Montessori Society and we are not regulated to keep that information. Okay. One of our classrooms is twos and threes and regulated through DCFS and we do have to keep attendance records and we throw it in a file folder at the end of okay. the week. Right. Okay. So so here's so so. First of all, you don't have to deal with the paper, right? Because there's also probably about 20 other steps in regards to actually managing the paper that nobody actually thinks about. It's like getting oh, the I'm, paper. And I'm... A binder, you know what I mean? Like photocopying. Right. And all these all of that things. stuff, I'm totally on board with getting rid of the paper. <laughs> That's why yeah. I'm kind of pushing this to, to make it happen. Because right. I know once we get on, over the initial hurdle of having something new and different, that it'll be great. But I also have to do my due diligence to make sure that they're getting all the data that they need. Yep. And it looks like, you know, with I like the way that this looks so they can see everybody. Um, otherwise, you know what's going to happen? They're going to say, well, we're just going to print this out. And I don't want mm -hmm. that to happen. Yeah. Um, the other thing is with this yeah, type of form, is there the capability to build in um, a way to count the status. So I would know how many are present, how many are absent. How often do you have to do that? They they do their accounts. They look through their accounts every single day, several times a day. So every time they're taking attendance, they're also counting and making sure the bodies match up. Yeah, with with the with the capacity or the the the, the enrollment of the room. Right. Say so, so there's 20 students in one of our classrooms. And on any given day, we'll know, okay, we have 15 coming in this day. We have 12 coming in that day. You know, you're going, you're marking down who's absent, who's here, and then counting all those that are here and making sure your number totals when you're counting bodies in your line. Right. So you want it to tally, like do a calculation of all the, all the students that Correct. segment that are present. Um, right. So... Um, yes, there is a way of doing that. Um, I don't have that to show you as an example, but we can do okay. that. Okay, but it's it's possible. Yes, absolutely. Good. Yep. That's great. Yeah, and um, yeah, okay. So that so um, so that's 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 a you know a really good example of how you know we can help you. And and there's probably hundred other things you guys do with paper that we can just like make way simpler and make it go digital, not require paper and not require somebody spending time, you know, managing the information. Um, exactly. At, I know that. Point, um, I was just saying at this point, you know, like all this data, all this information can just be exported into an Excel file. You know? Right. Um, and then you can do other things with that information if you want, you know, um, there's uh yeah, but essentially this is a spreadsheet, right? Like it takes the information ah. and puts it into a spreadsheet format for you. That's um, great. Yeah. And as I as the admin, you actually have access. Um, uh, this this is what it looks like in the front end, you know, um, for the, yeah. you know, this is what the, the staff would have access to. You actually have access to a bit more control and granular sort of querying and, and um, reporting in the dashboards, like the administrative dashboard side. That's where I'm going to go right now right. just to show you. Um, so this is like back here is where, you know, you can, this is where you would go to create forms. Again, like we'll do this for you, but if you want to just whip up a form, you can come back here and create one. 
Uh, nice. so I'm clicking into forms here. And you know, these are all the different forms, all those orange buttons that you saw, right? Mm -hmm. When they get created here, they automatically show up on the forms page. They can also be put in specific groups so that if it's a if it's a form like a like a field trip for a particular class or some type of or form for pizza or something like that, like anything you can think of, you do That's on paper can all the forms can handle it. Um, and they can be stuck in just specific groups. And the other thing is when you go to the forms page, uh, this will filter away from people that don't need to see it. So if there's forms that staff need to see, um, then you would put the form, you would assign that form to the staff group, and mm -hmm. then only the members of that group will see that form. Love or it. if there's forms, uh, so parents won't see those forms, right? We're yeah, that's everything. perfect. Yeah, because you're we're looking at the admin view, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're, you know, but if you're a parent, you only see one form or two forms, you'll probably have like an emergency information form, right? Medical information, things that parents need to submit, but also need to be able to update, right? So they can also go in here and update their, the paperwork they submit and, and update their new, the, the, you know, oh, you know, my dad just retired and he's going to, he's going to be uh, an emergency pickup or he's going to, he needs permission to pick up, you know. Leora, you know, in the afternoons, you know, so you need that information. He needs to, you know, you, they, they're going to need to update that, which would currently be a piece of paper that somebody has to like manually hand you, right? Mm -hmm. um, now they can just sign in, go to, go to their child's page and hit, click edit on that form that they submitted before. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. I know in the back end, it's going to save my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, so, and I'll just say that, um, there's the the same features that save you that much work also create a much better experience for the parents right and something oh, that i yeah, yes um i am I, i'm an office manager but i'm actually yeah. a parent as well sure. so i do see it from both sides and it's great i'm glad to hear that um and um and so we actually started from the p perspective of the parents like, mm -hmm. we, like when we set out to create Hubly, we said we want to create a parent engagement platform, something that parent like, you know, and then what we learned was, um, and, and so that's why we started with like the, the, the groups, the social groups. So basically, it's like a private social network. And that's kind of like the basis of the product. That's where it started. Because mm -hmm. we learned like, that's what that's what is ideal for parents. And that's what schools are trying to create by cobbling together a bunch of tools, but they just can't do it. It's just too too much to learn, too hard to manage, and nobody has the time for it. So, right. so, so we discovered that and brought it all into one place. And then, and then what we learned was, well, really, um, I mean, it, it's funny. It's like originally it was just like if we want schools to actually adopt our system, we have to talk to the school decision makers, right? And so. There has to be, of course, everybody wants better parent engagement, and, and they understand the value on parents actually liking the communication rather than hating it, right? Um, yeah. But, uh, and, and that does on its own reduce your workload, right? Like, I'm sure you, you would agree that if, if you knew who read every message and who didn't, that alone would probably save you a lot of time, right? And, sure. And, and also, um, stop you from like smacking the parents that did read it over the face with the same information 10 times. Yeah. You know, they don't need to, right. Cause it's like, that can get frustrating. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that the parents that are informed are like getting punished for the ones that aren't informed. Right. And right. you're just training them to ignore you. That's true. And then the other thing is um, it can create confusion when um, we sent out a blanket email and then you're like, oh, wait, did I, I thought I did that. And why am I getting this email? And then they have to send an email and say, I thought I already did this. And you're like, oh yeah, you did. But it yeah, went out to every, because that's the way we're set up, you know. That's the way so, every school is set up. It's not just you. That's what yeah. everyone's doing because right. it's too hard. It's too hard. So how, the whole point of how is that we make filtering the information to the right parents automated. So you don't have to think about it. You don't ever have to worry. We make it so that sending one, the, all your communication to parents are 100% relevant 
and when and when and they don't need to log into the system but when they do everything that they don't need to see is filtered away from their view so if they look at the school calendar right mm -hmm. just like on the forms page if they go to the forms page they're only going to see forms that they need to fill out um, and you don't have to manually set that up they just they're in the right group already so the system filters it away from them if they go to the calendar they're only going to see events for the groups that they're a part of and yeah and that's or, or very helpful events. for us the, um we don't have a lot of things that individual classrooms do but one thing in particular if we're setting up a show and tell calendar for the month yeah for that particular class it can just be all in there and everybody's right. happy so 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 the so so by by giving the parents a system that kind of retrains them to pay attention because the right. more you send them irrelevant information the less they pay attention to you that is a fact can't get away from that that's every every business that communicates with customers that's their challenge right it's like right if you, if you think of any other business that you that you use or service that you use if they were to keep sending you information that isn't relevant to you what are you going to do you're going to like unsubscribe you're going to just ignore it you're going to delete the message because because if it's like four pages of information and like one paragraph is about your kids and everything is about all the other programs and all the other events that or whatever that isn't actually relevant to you it's not only annoying it's it's well it's not only like irrelevant it's annoying right right so you're so even if you want to pay attention to it <laughs> like it's it's just you know you're going to have that that sort of like cognitive dissonance with even wanting to open up that email so and and so the but, but the important thing about that is how does that affect the staff at the school like if your parents are uninformed what does that mean for your life right it's it's more difficult so yes no the the parent communication piece i think is is pretty straightforward and clear and that's why i wanted the second demo to Give me a little more understanding we have about. To make sure that it, we have to make sure that it actually makes administration easier for everybody. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And that's and and that's actually the point that I was trying to get to. I got sidetracked, but what we learned was we had to have that to get the parent communication piece to the parents because the schools are like, okay, that's nice, but like, you know, I'm swamped with paper forms. And that's right. You're adding. Are, you're adding yeah. one more thing to do versus. A, exactly. A solution. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then um, we are considering um, having you guys host our website as mm -hmm. well. Do you yeah. need to make a change there? So I'd like to hear a little more about the website. Yeah, so it's really easy. Basically, um, when you sign up with us, we'll just migrate everything over. Um, any, any information that you want migrated over to your Hubly site. So mm -hmm. when the way it works is um, when parents, uh, so there's everything that we're looking at here, this is all password protected. Sure. Right. So, so only the parent, you know, only the users that have the login can see this stuff. Um, when, so what happens is like these, all these things are, are kind of are set. Um, mm -hmm. And then when somebody logs out, the navigation switches to all the public information. So it's the same site. There's just a public view and access, and then there's private. So sure, know, uh, we deliver all of these features through the vehicle, uh, like sort of the basic vehicle of all these features are uh, is a website, right? right? So it's like a website with a whole bunch of great whiz bang features and you know um, performance improvements and extra security and all the things that schools need, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and that's just the basic vehicle. So allowing you to also have a website is, uh, for public facing stuff is, you know, it was easy for us to, to do. It's uh, kind of flip a switch. And then, you know, so we, you know, you, you look at it. Well, let me give you an example. Um, um, let me just take a look here.
So I'm just going to show you an example of a school that's using Hubly. And we'll start all the way from doing a Google search here. If I do a search for Montessori schools in Palo Alto. So this see this first organic result. This is bowmanschool.hubly.com. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one of our customers, the Bowman School. And they're using Hubly as their website. So this is their website. This is, you know, they just they migrated it over. But you see there's a login area. Right. So what they're showing here are events that, that they want to be shown to the public, right? There's a whole mm -hmm. bunch of other events that are not. So they, again, they're not shown here. Um, and this is the standard stuff that they had on their website, you know, programs, admission, all the same, you know, basic website stuff. Um, right. And, and then, but the, one of the key things is that Somebody did a Google search for Montessori School in Palo Alto, and they found the Bowman School website right up at the top. Number one, that right? That is very, very important because that's how that's how new prospective families will find you and find your website. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, so now they're here, and then the parent can log in, and mm -hmm. and then this navigation will change. It, it, you know, it'll it'll either add more. Um, or, you know, let's say take another one of the arts. Just to show you like a different site, how it can look. Great. So here's another school using Hubly. Nice. Yeah. So do and, you... And um... So do you have templates that you use for the design or how does that? Yeah, so um, so we usually when a school switches over, um, like they'll they'll either work with us to, you know, get, you know, uh, it, it, there's one template. So, so we don't do like custom design. I mean, this actually looks kind of like custom design, like, like these two schools look pretty different, but it's all based on one template. So the template is oh, really, really... The template's it's funny, it's a lot different, but when you flipped, it, and now I see it was just more of a color change. Yeah, exactly. So, so we have a template, but it's flexible in that um, you can you can change the colors on any of the sections. You can add your logo. Um, mm -hmm. You can add, you know upload your content, and and we can do um, we can do customized work within it, right? Like right. all of this stuff is it's all custom yes. content. Drag and drop if you want a text box here, if you want picture yeah. there, that kind of thing. And it's all responsive. So like, and this is like mobile responsive, which means like th these are important elements for, you know, yeah. for getting search engine placement. Um, yeah, so it's it's all based, so we don't do like, like full custom design, but we, do, so, but our template is flexible enough for any school scenario. Got it. And that's fine. And, and we just we just make sure that it's that, that all the content is in there with with best practices for um like, you know, for people engaging the content as a, as opposed to like trying to win web design awards, you know. Right. So, you know, some some schools that that sign up with Hubly, they just spent $30,000 on a website. And yep. and that's easy to do if you want to have like just a remarkably beautiful website. The thing is though, um, if they want to create a campaign, like a Facebook ad campaign to boost enrollment or or promote a annual fund or something, right? Um, and they need like a quick landing page to like just to whip up a quick landing page and put campaign information and you know things like that. Um, well, then if they're going to go to their website designer, that's going to cost them like a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks for a new page, right? Mm -hmm. With Hubly, it's all it's all there. You don't have to pay anything extra, and you can create it with a click. Cool. Drag and drop design. I mean, it's really easy to to make the designer. And I mean, let's see, let's do another one. Like just as an example, new. And again, this is is fully supported with that custom package, right? So if yeah. I'm like, we'd like to add a new you page, have, you exactly. guys that versus me. 
you can do it yourself, but we'll do it for you. Here's uh, the Montessori Foundation. You know, do you know the Montessori Foundation? Um, I know the American Montessori Foundation. So this this is the um, society. I don't know this one. No, I don't. Oh, okay, so this is Tim Selden um, from the International Montessori Foundation. Okay. Um, and this is their lab school. So they uh, so they just whipped up a page here for their building fund. They're, they're, they're moving into a new building. And so this is like, you know, a page that talks about it and then a form. People can donate different different donations. This is all with public features. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so there's just a, a endless things that you can do. Um, Nice. Um, and this is all within the same template. As you can see, the layout is similar, but all right. the content's totally custom. Mhm. Mm and that's I I we totally um are we have a bunch of pages in our website, but we're a very simple, you know, we're not looking for anything crazy. We just yeah. we need a a refresh on our website and um and we'll have to update some some content at some point, but yeah. yeah. And and you don't need to do it yourself. You can. It's really easy to do, but you don't need mm -hmm. to. And again, sometimes I'm fine with that, but it's nice to have the support when there's bigger projects, just from a yeah. time perspective. Because right now, but again, I'm hoping this, whatever solution we find frees up a lot of my time so I can do different things. But I need to concentrate on you know, more operational things versus, you know, creating a form and, yep. you know, all that kind of stuff, which that's what I'm, you know, what I'm doing now is a lot yeah. of um, list creation, forms, copying all the paper, making sure it's getting in the right place, getting um, the website updated with different information. So once that is more automated, it would be it would be great. Um, right, and that's that's basically what we're here to do, and just take off, you know, take the um, the workload off you. Um, oh. Yeah, this is the Montessori Foundation I was talking about. Okay, I have seen um, that. We're part of the American Montessori Society, so I don't yeah. do anything with the international folks, but I have right. seen that. Yeah. Yeah. So they're 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 affiliated somehow, um, but yeah, the. Uh, yeah, it's um, anyhow, it's uh, they yeah. they don't do teacher accreditation; they do like management consulting for schools and things like that. Right. Um, yeah. So um, so so w w what else do you need to see to to basically make a decision and say this is this is it? This is what we need. Um. Like, have, well, have we checked off all your boxes yet, or is there anything else? See, well, I so I've heard that you guys are putting something together for enrollment planning. Um, yep. Do you have anything to show on that yet, or mm -hmm. is it just still in concept? It, no, it's it's in testing. Um, so it's basically created, um, but uh, showing it, I can't You're show not... it to you. Okay. Um, but it's it's like... Yeah, it's in it's in the late stage of development and testing and um so like so tell we, me a little we already manage enrollment. Yeah, so let me explain. Um so as let me just jump back to the <clears throat> one here. So so we already have students in here. So obviously and, and we have we have students connected to teachers. Right. I'm not logged in. So so obviously I couldn't see that because I wasn't logged in. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, my other question. I know this is all web-based, and that's how we, we get to all the information, but is there an actual app that parents would download? Do you have an app or no? No, we don't have a native app, but um, but we, we design it to be uh, – we design it actually mobile first. Um, so what that means is if I, if I squeeze this down um, – Yeah. It turns into a mobile app on on a on a mobile browser. Sure. Uh, and so everything is designed to make sure it works that way. And then what a lot of parents do is just um, they just uh, save yeah save a um, uh, a bookmark to it on their mobile app screen. So mm -hmm. it's just they click on that and it opens right up. 
Uh, so it works essentially the exact same way. Um, the only difference from a mobile app, like a native mobile app to a web app is that it, uh, we don't, we don't um, do push notifications. So like you won't see like a red dot, you know, on that actual icon when you save it to your home screen. Um, but we do send email notifications and text message notifications. So, sure. you know, so you, the, all of our parents are still like, like we've got hundreds of thousands of parent messages flying through our system every month. And right. they're, you know, I think it's over 80% are all being engaged mobily because that's already where they open up their email and that's already where they get their text messages. Right. Right. So, and mm -hmm. then from an email, if they, if they need to log into the system, they can just click on the link and it'll take them right in, or they can just go to that, uh, that bookmark tab on their, on their phone. So okay. the experience is essentially the same. Sure. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, so, but we, we actually will be pushing that out, uh, a, a native mobile app down the road, but it's just not, we don't have a firm date on it yet. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, so in regards to the student and enrollment, um, so you can add students in here. You can, so let's go to, back to Leora's page for a second. So students are currently organized uh, by teacher. Um, so the thing that we're adding in is, is like programs, right? So, so instead of having these direct connections from, you know, children to teachers and parents, mm -hmm. um, obviously children will always be directly connected to their parents, but the, the teacher will be connected to the child through the program. So, it'll, so that's, it's just like adding a, a, you know, a new layer that helps make things a little more, uh, flexible and, you know, easy to sort and, and organize. But um, there's ways of, of managing enrollment any way that you need to today, like with a combination of forms and, and the students' connections and everything, but we're just making it a little more um, uh, program-driven. Okay. And we're, and we're just going to keep on adding on to that so it becomes more of like, so the, there'll be timetables and there'll be, um, uh, and so like subjects and things like that that, that we're going to keep on adding into the system. Okay. But as as of today, it's, it's a it's a fairly basic enrollment system. Okay. I mean, I think I, that's I I think my I had a question because it seems like um, through the forms and populating the groups and getting everything connected, it kind of I can kind of see. Um, the enrollment obviously so oh, oh definitely yeah so what about um different sessions for so if we have a group for our yellow room mm -hmm. and we have a current we have a current session we're taking enrollment for summer session and we're taking next fall how do you do that can you so, do that yeah oh yeah absolutely so okay. again in the form in your in your enrollment form you you would you know be able to specify what program so you know, or session you're enrolled separate in. into separate groups yeah so yeah so the um so it's really easy to move you know parents from one group to the next um, okay it's just like so, clicking on a button kind of thing a checkbox or something yeah, you have your list of parents and you can, you can, you know, filter by, so let's say parents of one group are moving into the next one. Um, you know, they're moving from one room to the next room, right? Um, so you just select all those parents and just move them into the next, next group. Okay. And we're actually making it, so this update is actually going to make all that stuff even easier. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the whole so point. Like, I guess, I guess and, now that. So it's actually easier for us because because um because a lot of times you know we'll just do that work for you um, uh -huh. it's easier for you as well um, if you want to do it yourself but like you know if you want to go in and uh i mean it's really not that challenging to move everybody from one group to the next i can even show you how it's done it's, it's really quick and easy yeah i'd love to take a peek
so this is the the main database of you know users mm -hmm. members of your site that we're going into here and so this is everybody right here and there's filters if you need to see every you know filter so let's Love. just say if we filter by um uh, let's see here class 104 hit apply And now I can just select all those people. So these are everyone from class 104, or you might say, you know, room, what, what's the name of one of your rooms? Yellow room. Yellow room, great. So now I'm gonna go to bulk actions and then um, add to group. And then I'm gonna select, uh, let's say this one is Miss Pat's classroom. So let's say that's blue room. So I'm just gonna take all those people, move them into blue room. And then it's done. Cool. But there's a way they can stay in both groups if they need to? Yep. Yeah. So actually, I, I didn't yet remove them from that group. So the next thing I would do is the same people. Oh. I would remove from uh, John Test group or yellow, right? And hit done. And then, and then they'd be removed. Um, okay. And then you can, so this is, these are your filter, filter options. You can, you can filter by role, parents, teachers, administrators, staff. Um, and you can export everybody and import them. Um, and you and then as far as seeing all of their different schedules, like we have, so again, I'll go back to my little paper copy and mm -hmm. we have student name. Um, we have blank boxes if they're at school so they could be checked off or there's X's in the boxes if they're not there that particular day. And then we have a notes field that will say their actual schedule. It'll say they come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8.30 to 11.30. And maybe on Tuesday and Thursday they come, but they come at 12.30 to 3.30. Um, to get that information out of the system, do am I going to just have to do an export and select certain fields to be able to look at that data? Well, you you would be able to. I mean, so that that could all be done in a form. Right. What was and that? Then that could all be done in a form. Um, okay. And then and then you can view it either through the dashboard, but it would be easier to do it from the front. Okay. Like, so you like j just from the, the same thing as with that that list that I showed you with the attendance. Yes. Um, you could have using the enrollment form. You could. Uh, select like you could either filter by child so you could look you know every child could you could have their enrollment information there mm -hmm. and and all that information you know so you'd be looking at a list of children and seeing whatever information you want to have viewed viewed there and and with whatever notes and you can go in there and update it anytime you want okay i, I don't think i have a, a, a exact what is that answer. class list report it's a good question. We have a whole bunch of forms here that are made during demos, so I'm not sure if this is actually a functioning form or if, you know. Okay. Yeah. So there's nothing there. It was just like kind of thrown. Sometimes we during a demo we just like show people like this is how easy it is to make a form, you know. And right. We just kind of whip one up really quickly. So I don't. I, it's it's sometimes I don't like. I'm anxious to show any of these because I don't I don't know if there's anything oh, on there or yeah. And then again, you have think. grade. You can do grades, you can, I mean. Anything you can do on paper, you know, let, let me show you a scope and sequence as an example. Okay. Um, so scope and sequence, so let's go take a look. <clears throat> so again, I'm gonna select the child that I'm doing, I'm gonna do Leora, and I'm gonna select the coordination system or the coordination section. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm just doing my, my scope and sequence report. And Leora is brilliant. Oh. She's mastered everything. And so this Me is a really basic one, but this could be really, really elaborate too. Like we have full common core line scope and sequence with the lesson plan inside everything. It's just like everything's in context. And, you know, so I'm just doing this report. I can leave some notes. I can say it's completed or not completed, you know, and I can... Right decide, no, I'm not going to send that notification to these people today, you know, uh, and then when I submit this, 
it goes on into that list. Um, and then I'm just trying to think of the actual, like an enrollment example. Um, child enrollment and health information. Oh, that's interesting. Because the other thing that they that I do um, is anybody who has an allergy, I give all the classrooms a list. It's yeah. we're using FileMaker, and we have some sure. um, scripts written to be able to mm -hmm. kick out that data. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's certain things like I make it bigger and bolder and put it on super crazy pink paper so everybody can see it and make sure that they know who who has a nut allergy who has whatever yeah. so but yeah, is a really powerful tool um and schools use about 10 percent of it usually um oh absolutely i have no idea how to use it we have no support oh, yeah, you, you, so could be, uh, you could get a degree in like filemaker pro yeah you know, database design i mean it's you know it, it's a very powerful tool it's, it's great um, you can build a whole like product off of it like a whole software product off of it i mean that's how powerful it is but wow. um but I don't but, need that <laughs> yeah it's, it's like bringing like a bazooka to a knife fight you know all right uh so i mean so so we um so we you know we, like uh i don't think there's anything you, you currently do on file micro pro you can't do here good i like that statement I mean, and to, to a large degree that, I mean, we do replace and we have replaced FileMaker Pro amongst many other tools for schools that, you know, yeah. like used FileMaker Pro as their main database, but they, you know, but it was just one thing that they did. And like, then they would take the information from there and put it into five other places so that they right. could send newsletters here and like text message people over here and send a Facebook post over there. I mean, it's just like, you know, uh, it, it doesn't, you know, there are ways of making everything work off of a system like FileMaker Pro, but you have to be either have to hire a developer or be a developer yourself to do it and make it work. Right. And, and, I use in HR. I, that's not my strong suit. So. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I mean it's this is this is very helpful in understanding um, more of the functionality and what we're able to do and you know, really know that we can give you everything we do on a form and and get that back in an automated way. So yeah. that's great news. Um, and then again, recording this is perfect because then I can just share this recording with my director and she can take a look at it at her convenience because um, it's important that she understands Kind of at, the, the at whole. This point, yeah. At this point, what's your decision making process look like? I'm going to share this with her, and um, she's reviewing a couple other systems as well. Um, and then she's going to, you know, give the green light on what to do, and then we'll we'll be ready to get moving. Great. Um, we know we're not going to make an August deadline to get everything buttoned up and done, but um, you know, shortly after the school year starts, it'd be nice to make a transition and get everybody on board. Well, um, so th and this is what I would suggest on that topic because it is it is obviously close to August, and yeah. and uh, one thing we saw last year was a whole bunch of schools kind of signed up in August, and and they and they they had this expectation for some reason. They needed to like do some big extravagant launch of this new system that they have, and and um, and they ended up putting a lot of unnecessary pressure on themselves. Um, sure. And and so so what I what I would suggest is um, even if you wanted to go with Hubly like today, uh, there's no need to like again do this big big launch or the big newsletter notification schools schools um they when this time of year it makes a lot more sense to just start using certain components of hubly because just the digital forms component for like your parent packet process can save immense amounts of time right yeah and and 
and you start using it for newsletters. Like the parents don't need to know. Like you've right. you have they're in your database already. You just move them into a new database, which is Hubly that you're using, and you can start communicating with them through Hubly, and they're just getting really nice looking newsletters from you. And now you're tracking them, right? And and yeah. when when in in that newsletter it could say, here's a link to let your parent pack it, and they'll be like pleasantly surprised when they don't get a big stack of paper they have to fill out with like the same repetitive information ten times, right? Um, and like and that. we are in the midst of putting those packets together that they have to bring back to us on our open house day, and yes, it would be. Yeah, so, so I, I, I fully agree. I, I just softly know, rolling right? it out is is great. Um, it gets gives me and uh, you, you know the other folks in our office the opportunity to kind of learn it and understand it, and then roll it out to our classrooms. And then really, I mean, like you said, it's it's almost seamless to the parents because they're they're just like, oh, cool, I get to fill this out online now and. They're exactly. just happy. They're exactly. They're just their their experience gets better, and then all of a sudden, like, oh, I'm getting, like, you can put them into the groups and start posting notifications in different groups for like little mm -hmm. updates and things like that. And all of a sudden, you're starting to retrain them. Like, oh, like I just got this email with this message that you know it's one or two sentences long and it's 100% relevant to me. You know, right. um, but they don't even you know. Like and they can just reply to it. Like their their li the whole point is that their lives don't have to change. You don't need to tell them that you don't need to make this big thing. Like oh you're in Hubly now. Like right. you know, it's nice to say hey we've we've got this like amazing communication system to like make your lives better. That's that's a good thing to communicate with them. But it's also it's also it's also a good idea to actually make their lives better and then tell them what you did. And like, hey, see how our, you know, did you notice our communication is a lot better over the last month? Well, this is why, you know, I... and, and then you can phase it in as you like it. And, and um, just so you understand our onboarding process, <clears throat> the initial setup, again, it's all done by us. You just dump every, all your forms on us. You get, you send in your database. You don't have to set all this up. We will set it all up for you. Uh, that takes us days. Um, even your website, move everything over. This is, we're talking about a matter of days. For you to learn the whole system, right? Like we, what we do is we give you a one-on-one -on -one training session once a week for for four weeks. Okay. So while everything's already getting set up for you, you're learning the system, and and in the meantime, in between those, you could say like, okay, you know, we really want to do the parent packet digital, because honestly, that'll save you weeks of work, like weeks. I mean, I, I mean, every school I talk to does the same thing, like. Lots of paper goes out to the parents. They're collecting all this paper. They're taking the information from the paper, moving it, either keeping it in paper form or moving it into, you know, some other system like manually typing it into Excel or some or FileMaker Pro, right? Somebody has to move that information from paper into FileMaker Pro. How much time does that take, right? So wow. like, that'll never have to happen again. Like, no one will ever have to move information from paper into a database because the digital form does that for you. Yes. And I love that. <laughs> so <laughs> I, can't, I can't like giddy enough yeah. over that one. Yeah. Okay. That's a good thing. This is being recorded. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so the point is that like that's something that we could do like for you tomorrow. Like that could be ready for you tomorrow. Literally. That's amazing. Like that process could be ready for you tomorrow. Wow. Like if you signed up with us today, that could be ready for you in a day or two, depending on like when we get when we get the forms from you, you know. Um, and then we, you know, you just it's 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 a matter of emailing them to our our support team. That's all. Wow. I mean, we do this every day for schools. Like we we know what yeah. we need. And your bread and butter. <laughs> this is what you do. You're like, oh, it's a form. I got it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, every every form at every school is ninety five percent the same. So it's. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so, so my suggestion, I mean, is like how how much urgency is there on your side to get going, especially with like the website and all this stuff? Like, where, where are you guys at? I mean, you're saying like you. Um, I That's mean, a good question. I mean, I think um, I I was I was more lax about the whole thing. I'm like, well, you know what? I know it's going to be 
something we need to kind of baby step through with our teachers and all that. So I'm, I wasn't I wasn't crazy about like okay we have to get this done before the beginning of the year. However, I I did speak with my director and she's like, well, we should probably get this done. I'm like, well, okay then. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, I just shared with her basically all the information I've been gathering over the last couple of months. And now our summer camp has ended. And now um, I think both of us are at a place where we can put some attention and just say, okay, what are we going to do? And the only thing is I'm going out of town next week Mm -hmm. and i might i might be able to do a little bit of work maybe next monday or tuesday um if we if we make a decision and get things rolling um but really i'll be gone through the seventh and then she goes out of town for a week but we will make a decision i will say we'll make a decision probably early next week on what we're going to do so then we've had that commitment and we know what we're where we're going. Okay. Now, so, like I said, I'm going to throw at you. This is what I'm yep. going to throw at you. Because I think that well, you guys are on vacation and we could be working for you and getting everything set up. <laughs> okay. And 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 you get back and it's done. I kind of love check in. I mean, like as far as as far as getting what you need for the beginning of the year, like it'll be ready for you ready to go, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can start your your training when you get back. Um, okay. And all you all you have to do is just attach a bunch of forms to an email and send it into help at hubly dot com. That's all you have to worry about. <clears throat> um, and what I'd like to do is suggest that um, it's especially because the time of year and we have a lot of schools signing up and there's a lot of onboarding, right? Uh-huh. Um, that um that you guys make a decision this week um and that way we can commit to that and to help you make that decision what i can do is extend to you a 20 percent discount on the setup um and um if you guys make a decision this week okay that is um an incentive And I will, uh, I will share that with her. And it's recorded. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, more than that, we'll, we'll, you know, Pat will send this to you in an email, in an email as well, detailing the offer. Great. Um, the, and there's, there's, um, there's a few different ways um, that the pricing uh, c- can, can be set a little bit more in your favor. Um, okay. So, we do monthly payments. Um, right. So you guys, if you guys are going with the website, it's a. Um, are you you're familiar with our pricing at this point? Yes, I did take a look at that, okay. and yeah, I mean that was definitely one thing that we're considering. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. five hundred dollars a month. Holy cow! Well, yeah, but it's you know, it it's for a lot more value. I mean, um, so there, there's a couple of. So first of all, what we can do is. Uh, and I, oh, I should also check. Like when I say setup fee, are you do you understand what the setup fee is? Uh, four nine four four thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Exactly. So for yeah, for the custom level, like to right. take your whole website and you know, so you basically get a brand new website, which is, you know, in regards to getting a website, that's a pretty good price, um, in and of itself. Um, mm-hmm. So you get that and all the other addition like regular Hubly setup as well. And so really it's just a twenty five hundred dollar website. <clears throat> um because the other set the other stuff is like our standard setup, which doesn't include the website. Right. Um now, um so that would be twenty percent off. And um but our prices do increase, right? Like as we as we roll out new features, um we you know, basically when we deliver more value, we we adjust the price accordingly. Um, okay. Now that said, there's only so much we can adjust the price. There's only so much the market can actually afford. So we're not just going to like go and double our prices or anything like that. But right. we're, you know, we're we're going to have to like restructure the pricing because we're adding new features and it, we're kind of creating new packages. It's it's nothing is set right now. But what I can tell you is that like some of our some of our packages are going to increase. Okay. Um, 
but you are able to lock in your price a few different ways. Okay. Um, so uh, schools have uh, two options in that regard. You can pay annually. So instead of paying month to month, you can pay for the, the year. So you get 12 months, like you pay for 12 months. Uh, so, so you've got the, the price locked in for 12 months on the subscription. Okay. Um, and there's also an option to lock the price in for three years, um, where it's like monthly for three years or annually for three years. Okay, so, so no it's matter what the price does, you're you you're for, locked you know, at the four ninety nine. Yeah. Um, and we'd be able to pay monthly. Yeah. At that, if at that three year like contract. Okay. Right. Exactly. That's definitely good to know. Um. What, uh, when you do price increases, what is the typical percentage of increase that you've been doing and how often? Yeah, so it's, there's no regular um, set. Uh, I, I, I mean, we have, you know, we have schools that started with us at $49 a month and are now paying us $249 a month. Okay. Um, and they're happy to because like they're, they're getting more features, right? They're getting more value out of it. So like, they, you know, um, so it's, uh, um, what, I mean, there's, there's been a number of increases, but there's no set, uh, schedule in that regard. So it, it's a little bit tough to say we didn't go from 49 to 249 and we still have a 149 package. It's just that that school wanted the invoicing feature, right. Um, which was a really big, you know, addition to the, to the product, um, so, um, so like when the school was signed up for forty nine dollars, it was much less to our product at that point. Like we didn't no, do, yeah, we didn't do, a, we didn't have the invoicing, and we didn't have. Um, uh, I don't even think we had the students feature at that point. Um, so there was just, you know, there was just a lot more that's that's been there, uh, been added to it. So, sure. Um, I mean, would you that, say, you know, once a quarter you're doing something? Um, it's usually it's been it's really been uh, I would say an average probably once a year. Okay. No, sorry, I'd say twice a year. Twice a year. Yeah. And it's not always it's not always an increase um, on all packages. Like if if we're adding something to a particular package, um, then it, it'll go up. Okay. Which we're if we're at the custom level, that's kind of the. Well, there 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 are going to be additions coming to the custom level. Okay. Uh, and it's it's all based on our roadmap, uh, like our product roadmap, and when you know we're always sort of re, you know juggling and, and reprioritizing when everything should come out. Sure, um, you have a pipeline. Yeah, so there's going to be a, so some things are just product improvements, and you don't. There's no, we don't, it, we don't charge more for that. We just, if we're, if there's a product and we're improving it, like making the user experience better or making it work faster, whatever it is, um, redesigning it a little bit. We don't, we don't update the price at that point, but if we add a new feature, then, then we I, So like when you said you're, you're going to be at some point doing um, an app. Yes. Got it. Okay. But that's still maybe, maybe not, because if it's not, a, it's not necessarily a new feature. Right. It's just kind of a front end button you push to get to the same place. Yeah. It's so, a new entry point to the same features, but right. it's not necessarily a new feature. I mean, it, it is arguably a new feature, but it, it doesn't, um, we're doesn't doing do anything. It, except it doesn't, we don't think it adds all that much more value, but it's just something that the market keeps asking for and you can't ignore that from customers. Good. Um, That's yeah. good that there's, go. they're not sure. Because, you know. yeah, it is just kind of a button. But, um, okay. That is great to know on the pricing front. So, I will... Is that, is that, is that in the realm of... Um, is that realistic for you guys to make a decision in that time frame? I'm honestly not sure. I don't know if my boss was planning on working tomorrow. If she was, 
then she has some time to go through this presentation, digest, and make a decision because she's already done that with a couple other things. Okay. Um, another but, thing you should know as well, another really important piece to this is that there's a 60-day 100% money-back guarantee. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, and, and that's um, – I want to make sure I don't leave that out because – when you um, and th and that again, that's you know we're very confident you're going to sign up and love it. Um, and if you go through there, there is a there is a requirement to get the refund. You have to go through our onboarding program, which okay. everybody does. Um, but it, I mean, we just want we're we're very confident that if you do that and we set it up for you, and we're obviously risking our time and to actually and you know we obviously pay people to do all this stuff but our team members are all you know paid for their work of course so um so we'll we'll do all that setup we'll get it in there and um and if you go through our onboarding um and you don't want it like you don't think it's the right fit and you cancel um you get every dollar back um and also, if you're going um, month to month, like if you don't sign a, um, a three, um, and so if you just decide to go, okay, I'm going to take the 20% off and we're just going to go month to month, right. you can cancel at any time. There's no contract at that point. So after the 60 days, even like three months down the road, if you guys just decide for whatever reason, you know, you can cancel any time. Just... Okay. <clears throat> I'm not saying we won't fight to keep you happy as a customer. Make it <laughs> right. better, but like, and I'm, I'm really looking to make the right decision the first time and not, uh, yeah, of course. Cancel anything. Cause that's, that's a lot of work for everybody. Um, okay. You no, know, that's, that's great to know. And like I said, I, I need to talk to Anne and just see if it is a realistic time frame to make a decision. Um, like I said, we've been doing this for a little bit now, so, it's possible, but I'll. So, who do I contact? You or Pat? It'll be Pat. Yeah, Pat's gonna follow okay. with you. Uh, you know, I I I do the sort of second tier demos if needed. If there's more, you know, specific questions. Sure. Um, and uh, but she's um, she's on the line still. Hi, Pat. <laughs> um, and uh, she will she'll follow up with you. Uh, with everything so i'm just going to hop off i'll let pat wrap up with you and, okay uh, but i really appreciate your time uh check, take, taking this time to you know really give hubly a good look and i really hope we get the opportunity to you know to be your your community you know system i think i think we can really save yeah. you a lot of work very specifically <laughs> right no it does it sounds like it um i guess the one last thing i would uh, you know for making a quick decision do you have a list of references that we could call up and chat with? Absolutely. We, uh, yeah, we do. Um, we've got some to talk to. Uh, it is limited because um, um, because we you know we, we don't just share anybody, so we have to get like approval, right? And of course, try to cycle through some so that some people aren't getting <laughs> called by everybody. All this, yeah. Um, but yeah, we've got a couple people that that you can do and get a okay. reference for sure. Great. I think that'll be something Anne would like to do. So. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. All right. Well, I'll, like I said, uh, thank you for your time, and um, and I'll leave that to uh, to just uh, make any Great. final communication arrangements. All the best. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jono. Thank you, Jono. Are you still there, Angela? Yes, I am. Okay, great. So um, I just want to let you know that one, that's a great offer he offered you. <laughs> You know, it's it's something I hope you'll definitely think and consider about. And I'll email all this to you. Um, if you have any questions or Anne has any questions, please call me. Yeah. And you can also, you know, my cell phone is on there. Feel free to call me or text me. I, you know, I offer that to people as well. Um, That's helpful if we're going to try and make a quick decision um, this week. Which yeah. Thursday. I'm like, oh, no pressure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is a fantastic offer. I mean, that's why. Great. Um, yeah, it's a great savings, which, I mean, we're a small school, so every little bit really does help. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't know if I told you this the other day when we were talking. I actually used to be a Hubley user at a school. Um, 
and loved it so much came to work for the company. <laughs> and uh, one of the reasons I loved was the folks to work with. They'll do so much to help you and teach you and are so flexible and listen to their customers. It's really an awesome, awesome company. No, that's that's great. Um, it's something that I am really looking for is is support and you know almost that partner just to help us do things better as well. And it sounds like you guys have a lot of experience um, with with this. So yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, between the getting the keywords on your site and making it look you know user friendly and all those things, yeah, they've been doing this for a long time and are experts in it. So you have that huge tool in your back pocket, um, you know, versus paying, you know, chunks and chunks of money to have, you know, a marketing person, a website person, all those things. It's expensive. So you have it when you go with the custom package. We're, we're all there for you. We'll come out and wash your car. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, I can do um, that. <laughs> oh, that is, that's, that's really great, Pat. Um we have uh, some decisions to make, it looks like. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll email you this in yes. this recording and also some references you can contact. Perfect. Um, and then I'll follow up with you tomorrow. Would that work? Um, yes. Right. I'll have to give you my cell number because okay. I will not be in the office. Okay. And I'll only be available in the morning. Um, okay. I have stuff going on. So... My phone number is, um, my cell number is 415-377-1820. Okay, so that's 415-377-1820. Correct. Okay. Okay. And, and then, yes, um, if you'll send that right away, I will shoot it over to Ann and, and give her a call. Because I actually, I'm at home doing the demo. It's a lot easier to get the get it done here than in the office. So oh, great. Good I have actually, um, that's right. I have to go back and um, pick up my son. So I have to go back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So oh, I'll shoot this over in the next few minutes. So um, perfect. All right. And then we'll be in touch. And like I said, if there's anything questions or any of that stuff comes up, uh, let great. me know. And when you're ready to move forward, I'll just, I can do a quote online for you and it's really easy to get to go forward. Great. Sounds good. All right. Thanks so much, Angela. Thank you, Pat. Okay. Bye-bye. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.